2023, really the big risk we heard was one, AI made the big splash in November 2022. By 2023, companies are starting to panic. A little bit about where this is going, but more so uh, it was concerns around data exposure being the major risk we heard throughout 2023. And this is chat GPT related of everything you type in is now being consumed and used to train the models. And there's a few famous cases out there where the the models were learning private confidential information from one company and then it would show back up in other iterations, you know, a little bit clouded on who it came from, but nonetheless is confidential information being exposed. As we move into 2024, that risk for most organization has drastically dropped. And that's because the introduction of the ability to have private models by organizations, many companies are starting to purchase that either it's from like a co-pilot or one of the chat GPT private models or any other kind of open model that they're purchasing, where it gives their their employees the opportunity to utilize a model safely. Additionally, I think throughout 2023, there was a lot of mitigation put in place to help address that risk of employees sharing confidential information, whether it would be blocking uh, the AI models completely on company-owned laptops to the introduction of policies and training regarding do not sharing information that, that we saw that, that risk uh, be reduced, not eliminated, but reduced. However, in, in 2024, in a lot of the conversations we're having from an enterprise perspective, the, the risk around AI is shifting. Um, if we stick kind of with that data exposure or the threat of AI, the, the big one that we're hearing from organizations is around, uh, I'm calling it advanced cybersecurity attacks, where pr prior where it was mildly sophisticated to unsophisticated bad actors, whether it's be phishing campaigns, ransomware attacks, whatever it might be, can now use AI to more quickly and easily infiltrate systems. Think about your your phishing emails that you receive, uh, where you know common common issues is poor spelling, poor grammar. AI is actually resolves a lot of that for those scammers, where they can have significantly better crafted emails to increase the likelihood of people clicking on a link. Additionally, you have the uh, introduction of uh, more advanced spoofing through uh, language AI, video AI. It's coming that's making it harder and harder for employees to spot potential bad actors trying to access the system. I think there is still a big fear factor within organizations. It's that resistance to change. If you compare that back to when internet or social media started, the first reaction of many organizations was, oh, we're not going to allow that because we're going to lose confidential information. People are going to spend more time on that than actually being productive. I think there's a big realization, Andrew, as you've mentioned, that Organizations are realizing, hang on, there's a huge opportunity here. Let us have the appropriate policies. Let's have the appropriate use cases and how to use these policies. But then let's start thinking about what are the opportunities. Talking about bad actors, my mind goes to the capability of the AI when it comes to those things. Andrew, you mentioned some interesting things like the ability to spoof video, mm -hmm. you know, make it hard for people to discern whether or not this is coming from a uh, source that they know, you know, voice duplication, et cetera. Those things are definitely a concern and, and we're gonna have to track those moving forward as they become more capable. The one that I think will be also interesting to track will be the capability of agents, AI agents to perform actions online, mm -hmm. to be given a task and perform that action because they can become, you know, a, rent, a relentless purveyor of whatever it's told that they are to do. I've looked at those recently, you know, they have limited case capability, but it will only grow with time. And obviously those are going to have to be handled somehow. But I think then, Andrew, it really starts taking us to the opportunity side. And, and I think the way I describe it to people is if data exposure was 2023, 2024 is falling behind in the, the opportunity loss of not pursuing AI. Um, and... 2023, we often heard organizations, oh, no, we're not doing anything AI. We can't touch AI. In those organizations, if they still have that same attitude, have the biggest risk of just falling behind because there's a few things that are happening in this space. And some are industry specific. Some are a little bit outside of that. But the big one is, I'm calling it the strategic use of AI. And that's really around your organization failing to take advantage of those opportunities that AI AI presents. At some organizations, we're seeing AI being leveraged in 
like micro pockets. Uh, oftentimes marketing is one of the first ones to grab it, where they use like the the, the image generator models, the dollies, to, to help create some fun images for potential social media or, or some minor use cases. But those are just kind of scratching the surface where a lot of the larger organizations, organizations that really need to lean in are looking, how can AI be leveraged and coming up with that strategy over the next two to five years, where it can be a combination of AI and robotics, AI and significant automation, and, and going beyond just this idea that AI can just be a chatbot to really AI can run portions of a business to, to really complement your, your human resources, your human workforce to, to support it. I think that really starts to drive the concept of missing out on opportunities. And if you ignore AI, actually mm -hmm. missing out on your relevance. Uh, mm -hmm. You can, your organization can become quickly very much irrelevant if you're not ut utilizing AI or appropriately adopting your business model to utilize AI. I belong to a couple of professional organizations where there are the comments in some of the meetings that's been made was if we don't adopt and change the way we do things we will be irrelevant in five years mm -hmm. we're talking about professionals and there are a couple of lists floating around by different publications that say anything from accountants to lawyers to consultants to software development how those roles will become to the areas that's very strongly says they become totally irrelevant to the others that says or states that we need to adjust and change on how we do the work to one to stay relevant and two to be to add a lot more value to what we deliver well and i think it goes into the the tied risk with this is that the speed of change um and, and david i know you probably have a lot to say about this but the speed that ai is coming on the speed that uh new capabilities being released is unlike anything we've ever seen before so we you know yanni you mentioned earlier of comparing it to the internet uh internet had a a kind of a ramp up period but yes it felt fast and accelerated at a certain point but nothing compared to what we're seeing with ai I mean, we're talking about ai being incorporated into most organizations here or organizations looking to do that and it really hit everyone's radar in November of 2022 with, with ChatGPT, with, with one public open model. And here we are only a year and a half later, and we're talking about uh, it needing to be ingrained into your business. The internet was not that fast. The change that we had from one week to the next is, is un, unlike anything we've ever seen. And so there's a big risk around this is that as you're setting your strategic vision of this is that, that the AI is going to move in different directions that you have not predicted or your organization hasn't predicted. And if you ha don't have some flexibility in being able to bob and weave with it, you could also fall behind of where it's going. Well, I think there's risks. When it comes to how fast AI is changing, I think there's two risks to keep in mind. One is the risk of one of your competitors building an insurmountable lead. <clears throat> That's one risk that we need to talk through. The other would be investing in the wrong AI strategy and going down the wrong road and not being agile enough to pivot uh, mm -hmm. because of the changes. So one of the things I'll talk about with the insurmountable AI lead, I think a good thing to think about this is think about some of the leading AI companies, some of the largest companies that are using it the most, and then it's almost at the core of what they're doing. Uh, a good example that I would use would be Tesla. And they have more data more data about their cars driving on on roads than any other company by far and they are using that data set and they've been boosting their compute power so there's been big stories lately about tesla upping the amount of h100 gpus that they bought from nvidia in order to try to chew through the data that they've compiled because they've become they've had they have enough data they have something like tenfold the amount of data that the next one of their competitors has when it comes to this stuff. Now they need the compute to chew through it. So at what point, if you have 10 times the data of your competitors and you're one of the, the competitors, at what point does it become an insurmountable lead where you're just too far behind? You're not going to be able to generate that much data, or at least it's going to take you years and you'll be at a disadvantage for that amount of time. So I think that's an example. Now, I know a lot of organizations might be watching this and being like, yeah, but not in our industry, right? Like that's the tech industry. That's like bleeding edge mm -hmm. tech. That's not happening in our industry. 
but you'd be surprised how often I hear organizations now talking about data readiness um, and the amount of organizations that have been either doing or thinking about doing data projects, you know, making sure that they have the data that they need captured about their risks, their business objectives, their operational metrics, all this data that can be used in the future. And I think maybe that's just a step one, right, that needs to be thought about at least to say, how are we going to use the data that we have? Where are we going to source this data, et cetera, on AI? So that that's just something that I was thinking about when it comes to that first one of like, you know, don't let your competitors get an insurmountable lead. And I think what you highlighted there is the concept of data readiness and, and to really leverage AI beyond just some simple models, it is your data being ready to be consumed and be, to train models for your specific needs. And in organizations that are not starting to think about data readiness that have data, I'm just going to use probably an overly simple term of like in a poor state, uh, a desegregated state or not in a consistent format, are, are going to spend a lot more time trying to even just get their data ready to play catch up with those organizations already moving. And, and with that, I, I think you highlighted something else, David, is that, um, you know, there's this focus on, you know, it's tech companies that are moving first. But, but what we're predicting, too, with this is that there's going to be changes to every industry. So like even in retail, retail oftentimes looking at, well, we still sell X, Y, Z, that people are still going to need X, Y, Z. So we should be fine. But there's probably going to be a shift in consumer shopping and how they shop and leveraging AI, which is going to be a common occurrence is in, into that shopping pattern. So if you think about the introduction of internet, how that changed how people shop in those companies that were able to get ahead of that, we're more likely to still be around today versus retailers that never really jumped on to evolve with the with the online platforms, online presence, uh, went out of bankrupt throughout the 90s and early 2000s. Uh, it's very likely that AI could have the same disruptive nature that if you're not thinking about the evolution of consumer shopping or consumer shopping patterns, that could lead to potential risk for your organization. And it also ties back to of, are you taking that opportunity? Are you falling behind your competitors in this speed of change? It all inter interconnects each other inside this inside these enterprise risks. I think Andrew, as you and David mentioned, uh, data readiness. Let's use the smartphones as an example. The first generation of smartphones, the apps were oh okay, yeah, it's pretty nice. Who of us can live without the apps on our smartphones now? And that's the same with. Are we establishing the right platforms that we can start expanding and utilize use cases more and more? As we go through and utilizing AI in our own business, I think it's basically on a daily basis that we come up with new use cases. But if we don't have the data and the platform in the right spot in the right way to utilize, we actually fall behind. So I think, David, what you said is critical that we have that readiness, but it's critical from a data and also an approach and a policy point of view that we have the foresight to set ourselves up for success. I've heard people mention that if you haven't started with an AI strategy, you're already two, week, two years behind in catching up. Mm -hmm. And that is a massive business risk that you need to deal with. And that was not set of tech industry organizations. That was set of distribution retail industries that was for me a big eye opener well and think about what we're talking we've been talking about for the last several minutes we've been talking about what is your strategy to leverage ai on your core business data to give you an advantage and that in a lot of organizations when you talk to them about ai they aren't even close to asking that question there's they're stuck in well, what tools do we use that have AI in them and how can we better utilize those, you know, which is not an unimportant question. Mm -hmm. You know, it's my opinion that you're going to see ubiquitous integration of AI into all the tools that we use. You could just see Microsoft Office is already going down that road of implementing Copilot into the Office suite. And those organizations, you know, especially smaller organizations, one day are just going to wake up. They're going to open up Word and Excel like they do every other day. And they're going to have AI capabilities built into those things that they, you know, never had before, and it will make them more efficient. I think the the question becomes not like 
what is your overall AI strategy as a business? Not only how are you using it in, in single pools, but what is your overall strategy as a business, right? Like how are you going to use it for the data to get a competitive advantage? And, and it's got to start, it's got to start somewhere, right? So it's not to say that or not to minimize the idea of using AI and tools. That's going to be excellent. It's going to drive efficiency. And it's something that organizations need to get their arms around now, not later, but then also tee up that bigger question, right? And I think data, as you said, David, is so critical. If we start thinking of just let's let's play out an example. If we can have a private model that have access to my financial systems. How difficult would it be to ask that private model to say, generate the set of uh, uh, annual financial statements with the appropriate disclosure requirements as required, let's say I'm a listed company, as required by the SEC applying US GAAP. All that data is there. We've already proven that uh, the large language models can pass the CPA exam. We've already proven that it can pass the bar exam. So it has the knowledge, it has the access to the systems to produce. Mm -hmm. Now think about that on my business model where I am. I'm running an accounting firm. I haven't you to start putting plans together on how am I going to utilize AI to deliver my services. Somebody else comes up with that model and link that model up to an accounting system. I'm out of business. Yeah, you know, in the think about the hurdles that exist there, right? From from a traditional accounting business to say, oh my goodness, it seems like an almost insurmountable challenge to get your head around that, you know? And I think one of the important first steps that organizations will need to start taking is just starting to probe the, the capabilities that they have with the, with the resources that they have, with the know-how that they have, with the things that they do, starting to probe what, what publicly available AI is out there and how they can apply it to their business today and tomorrow not next year because if you wait mm -hmm. till next year you know it's that's that's how you fall behind that's how you fall behind